Welcome friends to Chaoticism. Rabbi Ribby is a 2D Metroidvania released in 2016 whose main focus is the waifus. Definitely the waifus. Oh my god! Which gives us a glimpse into a perfect world. One where there are only women. As we all know, the only purposes a man has in the world are hard labor, fighting our fellow man, and procreation. When women learn how to asexually reproduce, it will start a division in history, seeing women create their own colony, isolated far out into the ocean where no one can reach. The result of this will be the world of Rabbi Ribby. Every character in this game's primary dimension is female. Needless to say, this game is the legal embodiment of girl love, because everyone loves women, even women. Rabbi Ribby is not something you would want your parents to walk in on at the wrong time. I'm not gonna judge your journey. It is your fantasy. Please make sure your door is locked and your headphones on before further delving into this video. I am risking all the respect I have for my family to bring you this presentation. So showing your unadulterated love in a way you see fit would please me greatly. Enough padding. Can you beat Rabby Ribby without being a degenerate? I understand that objective sounds subjective, but I will list out a tangible stipulation to raise the stakes. Can I beat Rabby Ribby without dying to the final boss? An Elon Musk fever dream such as this is jam-packed with cute cat girls and features an interdimensional space bunny lolly, the epitome of taboo degenerate complexes. Oh fuck. The personification of my alpha male Chad-like self-esteem will be derived from my ability to conquer this not child-friendly game. I will be playing on the novice difficulty as I am no casual and will be selecting the easier of the two boss options. This gives me a huge handicap in my overcoming of this challenge. Right off the bat, we wake up in a box, like any good Saturday morning, as a purple-haired playboy bunny. Don't get your hopes up, cause she's only 6 months old. Though my dream is to be transformed into a pretty woman, as I would then be accepted into human society, I cannot succumb to the temptations laid out by this game, so we press on, deeper into this delectable fantasy. A mysterious shadow lolly transports us into the world of waifus, but this isekai story only gets worse as we begin to see the world around us for what it truly is. We run into one of the many cat girls who mistakes us for a bunny loving fanatic wrecking havoc and chaos around the world, and proceed to beat her ass Amy style with the pico hammer we found lying around. Further on, we meet up with our right hand woman, Ribbon, a fairy who is scantily clad in just that, and speaks in the third person trope. However, this floating crime barely holds a candle to the near prison sentence we will be meeting towards the end of this run. We are introduced to the Bunny Lovers, a cult of women who all dress like bunnies and threaten the lives of anyone who refuses to conform, and appears to be the largest single populace on all of Rabi Rabi Island. The cult attempts to capture us because we are actually a bunny, but we escape and arrive at the mandatory beach level. After weaving around youthful girls in bikinis, we meet the peeping Tom Witch, a Shuri, who attempts to forcefully kidnap us, but we fight her off with our concealed semi-automatic hammer. I neglected to mention that our primary objective in this early part of the game was to find our master Rumi. Well, here in Rabby Rabby Town, she sees us and, overwhelmed with complex emotions, embraces us in her warm bosom. Oh, that's hot. This unofficial queen of the island then tasks us with finding other beautiful magic users so we can rescue her traveling interdimensional lolly sister. Quick interjection here, I want to mention that the music in this game is utterly tantalizing. Easily the best part, besides the waifus. Look up the original soundtrack if you don't believe me. From here, the game turns into a waifu fetch quest. Along the way we find ourselves lost in the underground playboy mansion and get attacked on all sides by bunny claws players and fairies wearing bunny ears, who all seem to be intent on causing serious harm to our perfect bunny body with magic and lasers. Though barely alive and still murdering the adorable local fauna and sentient flora, even the bees are waifus, we press on to Sky High Bridge, home to our first target, Vanilla, the white cat girl. We convince her through good old violence to help us out. Our heroine develops a little sister complex but despite the sheer adorableness of it, I do not. Bruh. Upon collecting our second magical waifu, we return to the queen waifu and consent to do her job of traveling to the human dimension. We get ambushed by otherworldly copies of ourselves and return a failure, having not found our lolly and needed to try again. Thus begins our second round of waifu fetching. 
The first subject of our subjugation was Sassini, a NASA scientist level lolly genius wearing their signature invisible pants. Now that you have seen this picture, like me, you are on a watch list, but not yet a degenerate unless you pause the video. Our second target was the orange cat girl from the start of the game who pretends to be hypnotized into attacking us and threatening to sell us to the bunny lovers cult to get her out of poverty. But she laughs us off after we unleash the smackdown, claiming she was just joshing but that some things were true, leaving us only to speculate. Regardless, we return to town and begin our second dimensional traversal. After waking up in the middle of a freeway, we rescue our poor, poorly dressed fairy girl from the hands of some freaks and proceed to battle our way through more neats and geeks, eventually coming upon, oh boy. If this game wasn't already wearing its theme on its sleeve, this would be the big reveal. Remember, she's only six months old, you degenerates. We get saved from this deviant harassment by an act of an interdimensional lolly god, leaving us to beat down our otherworldly copies once again. Victorious, we return failures of our mission and must collect more waifus to attempt rescue once again. We collect Vanilla's twin cat sister, Chocolate, agree to indentured servitude with the peeping Tom Witch, lie to an insecure presenceless girl to aid us in our quest, battle an immortal waifu over bad manners, and return before dinner to once again travel to the otherworld dimension. After battling our way through more perverted neats, geeks, and freaks, we discover the primary antagonist of Rabby Ribby, the interdimensional space bunny who's surprisingly not a lolly. After asserting our dominance as the best playmate, we are told we came too early, story of my life, and again return to the world of waifus. You know the routine, round up more waifus. Our final bout sees us rescue a mate with a questionable relationship to our NASA scientist lolly. That's some good sh <laughs> Before collecting our last target, the tentacle monster, complete with an assault from numerous long appendages. Our final descent into the otherworldly dimension has us find Rumi's long lost sister Miru who possesses the ability to send you to prison in one swift motion if that shirt were to fall any further. What's with lollies and not wearing any fucking pants? While not terrible, fighting this piece of jailbait was difficult and leads us into the second part of the final boss, Noah's embodied mana form. About as difficult as Miru, I did get put on my ass with regards to my healing items, though I came out on top. The third phase is Noah's mana monster form, who utterly ravages my life bar, leaving me devoid of my final healing item. We are unfortunately thrust into another phase after this one. Limping, and with barely any power left, we whittle Noah's bunny form down to its last fifth of HP, but alas, we are defeated. The waifus win, we failed the challenge and are thus labeled as degenerates. I was unprepared, I was not strong enough to resist the waifu whammy. There are no retries in this world, and thus we must accept failure. I'm such a loser. Nothing said in this short video was true, except for the things that were. Want to know which was genuine? They were, thank you for putting up with this short eccentric video. I need more time to do my next one, as I have also started a new job that physically drains me and I'm still getting used to the schedule change. I will continue to upload videos and have not forgotten about Stalker if that's why you're here in the first place. Good night, sleep tight, and don't let the interdimensional space lollies bite and leave you in jail with no hope of reprieve.